Hello and welcome. I'm just currently parked in front of the weigh scales. So I'm just going to weigh my chilled double decker. Ah, there it is in all its glory. Six axles, 44 tons, 16 foot three high, 5920. Five, uh, four, three, seventy, seven, two, fifty. That's the tractor unit weighed. Now the back. Six nine sixty seven one one zero oh, six nine two zero. Oh. And anyone quick with a calculator because I can't be bothered to work it out. It should uh, tell us what it is in a minute, anyway. It's definitely going to be lighter than last time. What would be about 38, 39, somewhere around that. Uh, what am I? Three cages short of a full load. I've got 73 cages on today. 38, 5, 30. Oh. Two and a quarter tons lighter than I was last time I'd done this. But away we go. And I suspect that this will really annoy management. I filmed on company property, oh my god, how dare you! You Philistine bar. Yes, but here we are, double decker, 16 foot 3 high, about as tall as you can get without running into any major problems but I shall see you further down the road because I'm just about to hit the exit where I could be seen with a camera on so better not do that so I shall see you later goodbye okay hello we're out on the open road now so all is calm all is fine so I can continue on unhindered in any way I like as I always have been and um, yes where was I so, 16 foot 3 uh, 13 point 6 meters I think this trailer is which is as long as a standard length trailer goes it's not one of them fancy longer ones and um, what is it, two and a half metres wide or something? So it's slightly wider than the ambient double-decker as well as being slightly taller. And that's basically to allow for the fat layer of insulation that goes around the outside of the trailer. Because you don't want to put it on the inside because it will make the inside smaller. And then you can't fit any of your gear on. And that bridge there is about three inches higher than the trailer. So you have to remember to make sure that the uh, suspension on the back's reset, otherwise you will be taking out the bridge or your trailer, or both, is, is more likely to be the case. Let's see, we'll have an open top double-decker. Uh, off to the same place that I was the other week, Abergavenny. I'm currently getting 7.1 miles to the gallon which isn't bad last time I was slightly heavier as I said earlier and uh, I had managed to get 6.4 miles to the gallon throughout my entire journey or in other words that's just over a mile every litre of diesel burnt so yes I'm doing my bit for global warming because uh, the sun appears to be missing somewhat of late and it was very cold at the beginning of this year no doubt you'll agree uh, what else about this trailer um, yes it's got a rear steer on the third axle at the back and you'll see that when I spin round in the yard at Abergavenny you get a full broad side of the trailer on the right hand side here uh, what else it's also got 
just a. <coughs> it's also got just two fixed decks and then a little tiny lift at the back that goes up and down, so you ride up and down with it to go to the back. So I was going to film inside with my lovely camera and hopefully it won't mess up like it did on holiday. So I had a lovely driving holiday all around the UK the end of last month, end of April. I started off in Land's End and zigzagged all the way up to John O'Groats and I used this to film the entire way but for some reason nearly all of the videos went missing off of it which is incredibly annoying, I don't know why it's done it and recovery software doesn't find anything of any use so that video is completely in the bin now and ruined so annoying but yes I shall hopefully get it to work long enough to film the inside of the double decker and what fun it is going up and down on the lift and unloading the top deck and the bottom deck because uh, if you remember the old uh, ambient double decker I've got the camera on the fixed bit at the front and you see me unloading the fixed bit at the bottom and then the whole top deck comes down this one only has two fixed decks, the one at the top that runs the full length and the one at the bottom that runs well, I'm just behind the fifth wheel here where the trailer steps down to the back and then you've got a little tiny lift that you go up and down in at the back and we ride that up and down unloading and reloading it takes forever especially because these people don't like it they don't like the double deckers at all. Well, if they sped up a bit, that would probably help. Because it was two hours last time doing this. So let's see if we can get that down a bit. And I may do, I'm not sure. And I've got a D-kit, this one. I've got back when I get back. And that involves... Like the ambient double decker raising the trailer to get it on the dock and as I said last time the back jumps up, the front drops down last time I'd done that I was in the cabin and the camera couldn't see it. So I will use that camera again and leave it outside you may get a better view of it sort of doing trailer jump. So that is the plan for today drive to Abergavenny, unload, reload, drive back, unload all the D-kit. So yes, apart from the M4, M4 and more M4, I shall see you further down the road once we get nearer to our destination. Currently up to 7.3 miles to the gallon. God, steady on. Hello, welcome to the M4 by the M32 junction, uh, junction 19, I think it is. And I may not uh, be doing uh, my delivery today because I was just coming along here. And there was a humongous bang. And uh, what it turns out is that the middle axle inner wheel has been spiked by the supports for the um, uh, the mud flap. So the mud flap's pierced the inner tyre on the middle axle there and I've had a blowout. And I'm currently parked up in the roadworks and that guy should be calling someone for me. That's my first blowout, and here is my recovery. Most excellent. Well, it appears that I've done more than just a bit of a blowout. 
because the engine's trying to build up air pressure. I've got some trailer warning things saying stop immediately. I'm struggling to get above seven and a half bar of pressure even though the engine's on a thousand RPM. And the trailer won't move even though the trailer brake thing is now staying in. So they're just trying to fix the leak so that my trailer brakes release at the very least. Seems like he may have found the hose that's coming loose. It's a little bit annoying. So I'm now stuck on the hard shoulder. We've managed to get it off, that's where I was over there on the slip road. But they've moved all the cones out and I'm over here now. So I don't know if I'll be making my delivery or not. But since we're here, there's the truck in all its glory. I do like the look of these better because they've got uh, a square top whereas the ambient one it dives down for the aerodynamics but uh, this one doesn't and I like it because of that it looks much more impressive. So I'm now on my own waiting for some guys from our workshop to come over and rescue me after getting stuck on the slip road because all my air pressure got lost so they've just temporarily bung the pipe back on and it made a hell of a bang I must say there's a right big cloud of dust behind me when I looked in the mirrors so yes our normal single deck trailers that ridge is where they would normally come up to and I've sort of blown out the support rods for these, they like. There's nothing holding them in anymore. So I could see in the mirror that one was out there like that. And the wheels flailed about. Oh God. Pulled in the mud flap. There's the support rod that should be holding this down here somewhere. My mud flap's been ripped in half. Oh dear, dear, dear. It wasn't me, Gov. I'd done all my trailer checks. I raised the trailer up several inches and checked each tyre, so all was good. This side's more impressive. Look at that. All the inner gubbins sticking up. And there's the rim there. So. There's the Thing, loads of tread on it. Uh, I don't know why it's popped. So it, uh, it looked practically the same as this tyre, and this tyre looks fine. It's not wearing funny, there's nothing sticking out of it. All the nuts are still on nice and tight. This tyre you can see it's really crushed now where it's supporting all the weight all by itself. So yes, we probably don't want to hang around here too long, just in case that one decides it's had enough. And decides to let go as well, because they are at about near 100 psi. And that's tyres back there. I'm up in the cab doing 56, so I've got a lot of wind noise, and I clearly heard it. Without a doubt, something went bang. So yes, I'm sorry, but you won't be seeing the inside of the double-decker today. At least, I shall try again another day. And, uh... Stitch it on the end of this video. Which will be coming up in a couple of seconds via the magic of TV. I do love the chill double-decker, even if it is a complete cow to me. Oh dear.
Well, yeah! Get in! Well, not get in, but hooray! Finally! Three and. Well, two and three quarters, it well, was half six, half seven, half eight. Three and three quarter hours later, nearly, we're finally on our way to Abergavenne and I should be arriving somewhere around 10 o'clock I have an ABS trailer malfunction now as well unfortunately but uh, yes my trailer has been bodged together with some cable ties and some DIY work and a new tyre so as you could see, there's a fair chunk of it missing. Which uh, is somewhere back down there somewhere. So yes, I should be arriving at the shop at somewhere around 10 o'clock. And I should have arrived there at half six. Which I was looking good to do. Uh, until that happened. But oh well, can't have everything. That's my first blowout, so I'm no longer a blowout virgin anymore. Although it's not the first one that I've seen, I've seen one happen before on a low loader in front of me. And that one was loud and I was about uh, oh, half a mile back in my car. And that was loud enough from there. Yes, to hear it just a few feet away was incredibly loud and exciting. Oh, ha, ha. Well, I say exciting, it wasn't really that exciting. There's not much happened, the truck just carried on. Yeah, at first I thought it had just driven through a pole or something. So it was that sort of louder bang and the truck didn't really react in any way. And then I remembered the blowout that I saw on the low loader and I thought, oh, well, it could be, yes. So I looked in that mirror, nothing. Looked in this mirror, and massive cloud of dust and everything, with classic signs of a blowout. And then smoke and stuff coming out from underneath the old wheel arch where the tyres rubbing against the ground. Burning rubber. So it's made our day a lot longer than it needed to be, but something new, something exciting. Let's crack on and hope that the rest of it. <coughs> <coughs> Tickly throat. <coughs> um, I haven't got a I haven't got a speed to reset. I haven't reset one yet. Um, let's hope the rest of our trip is not so bad, although I have been warned that the air hose for the rear steer is quite short now and may not be able to make the swivel for when I turn around in the yard, so I may end up ripping off an airline in the yard, which is why he's giving me a couple of zip ties to tie it back on. But apart from that, it just needs a couple of new side skirts because they've been destroyed by the flailing uh, tyre. Um, mud flaps been destroyed and need a new one of them. That new airline bit because that was knocked off and they've had to cut it and redo it to get it back on. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, redo the nuts. When it gets back, because they loosen off after a couple of hundred miles when it's first been changed. But at least we know what to look out for, or listen out for, when we have a blowout. So, fingers crossed that nothing else happens, and that we don't rip our airline off, and I shall see you all at the shop.
So, another day, another double-decker, without incident this time. So, just raising up the suspension, because I did promise you that I was going to show you suspension jump, didn't I? So, now that I've got one that hasn't broken, and it is daytime, i just raise up the suspension here. Make sure it isn't going to hit the roof. I think that's about as high as it's going to go. And we'll put this down here. And hopefully you can see the suspension jump on it.